Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, good to have you back with me again today in the Chippo Zone. Loving it. Today we have the Master Fui FY8233E. Whew, that is a mouthful. First off, you get some pretty decent test leads with this Master Fui. Oh yeah, better than your average cheapo test leads. What do I mean by better? Well, for one thing, they're definitely bigger. Uh, here's your standard cheapies on the left and the ones that ship with Master Fui. And uh, not only that, they have a really nice, soft, supple texture to the grip. And man, are they sharp pretty, pretty well some of the sharpest I've seen yet. Um, yeah, very nice. Now they're PVC, they're not silicone, but all to say for what I paid for this meter, these leads are dynamite. Hey, it also ships with this awesome little case. Comes with two AAA batteries. And yeah, the case is pretty cool. I mean, a case in the $10 or so multimeter range, unfreaking believable. Finally, you get your little Master Fui manual. Pretty nice, seeing this more and more. Obviously different languages are in the manual, but uh, everything you need to know is in your little handbook. By the way, hang on to these. If you're new to the world of multimeters, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. Um, they're really good to come back to every now and then. So yeah, keep the darn manual. And of course, the meter itself. Small, portable little meter. It's chunky, it is a chunky one, about an inch and a half or so. Um, but all in all, you know, it's pretty decent. We have a, just a standard plastic housing here. There's no rubberized um, boot or anything that comes with the meter. Standard plastic fare. So if you drop it, chances are it might shatter or crack or God knows what. But that being said, you know, it feels okay. So it has a standard tilt stand, standing wheel. Looking good, looking good. And all on all, first impressions, not too shabby. By the way, shout out to one of my uh, viewers who alerted me to this meter. Um, came up on Amazon for around 10 bucks. So yeah, crazy deal, and I couldn't resist. Thanks for letting me know. That selector switch is not too shabby either. Nice clickety-click, clackety-clack, you know I like that. Hits those ranges with authority. Now we don't have a pointer dial that is um, colored, which is too bad, but still nonetheless, does not get lost between ranges. Overall, pretty decent selector. Let's take a closer look at that selector switch starting at the midnight or off position. AC volts up to 600 volts. DC volts up to 600 volts. DC millivolts up to 600 millivolts. Resistance up to six mega ohm. Continuity and diode. High current amps, DC up to 10 amps. High current amps, AC. Capacitance. Non-contact voltage. Live wire. Top of the meter, we have our backlight. And on the right, we have our one-touch hold. Bottom of the meter, we have our high current 10 amp input covered with that little safety label. We'll pull that off in a second. In the middle, we have our common or ground. And finally, on the far right, we have our positive input for the capacitance, volts, resistance, and milliamps. That display isn't too shabby. I gotta say for a $10 meter, I'm liking it. Um, yes, it's LCD, nothing new, but it is clear, no bleeding, and overall easy on the eyes. Backlight, by the way, stays on for approximately one minute. 6,000 cap display, boy, what is not to love in the cheapo zone. Yeah, 4.996 for a 5.000 output. Definitely in spec. Today's shout out goes to my friends in Zimbabwe, Makadi. I hope I said that right. Thanks for watching. Next up is diode mode, LEDs, light emitting diodes, and our standard diode over here. Um, amazing how many meters get caught up with a bad diode representation. Don't know why, but uh, expensive meters, cheap meters, a lot of them have a tough time uh, lighting up those LEDs. Anyway, let's see what happens. Starting off with the standard diode, Forward voltage drop, no audible beep, however. And the red LED, oh no. It's not lit, we don't have a forward voltage drop. Over to yellow, oh, same thing. The green, of course, blue, no, nah, not gonna work. Oh, for five in terms of illumination and forward voltage drop. 
so not wanting this. Coming in as 2.4 volts, output voltage in diode mode. Now why the heck couldn't it light up some of these LEDs? Weird. By the way, I went back to do a double test on this and believe it or not, it actually is lit. Um, it's hard to see with the light, but that red LED is lit. So is the yellow and so is the green. Just barely though, I'm basically doing it in the dark. So yeah, they, they do illuminate, uh, no forward voltage drop. It's still, yeah, pretty crappy. Already Aphrodite, continuity time. Default stock test probes, three, two, one. Oh, scratchy. It ain't latchy. It is low, slow, and oh, wow, really crappy. Let's try the Probe Masters. Probe Masters. Oh my God, that is like night and day. Wow, wow. Latched, loud, and fast. Holy moly, what a difference a set of probes makes. Seventy-four point nine decibels, maximum output volume in continuity with probe masters, mind you. Try this high current now. Let's get rid of this little label. Oh wow, a little sticky, letting us know that this is where we have to put that test probe. Ah, okay. Currently, we're sitting at just under five amps, four point nine amps. Now let's see if this has a high current alarm, shall we? Let's bring it up. 10.15 amps and no high current alarm. Just getting an over limit, bring it back down. 9.39 amps, looking good. So certainly capable of handling that current. I uh, definitely do not want to keep it on the high current for very long with these cheapos. Currently sitting at 260 milliamps, DC milliamps, looking good. Let's just bring it up a little bit, shall we? And over limit, bring it back down 420. Now this has a 600 milliamp resolution on it. And yeah, so all seems to be fine in milliamp land. Quick look at resistance now. This only has a six mega ohm a ceiling for the Master Fui, so not a lot of room to work with. Starting off at 100K, let's go up to 900K, 800, 700. 600. Taking a little while to get there. Definitely not as fast as the uh, some of the other multimeters we've come across lately. Wow, that is slow. Holy moly. 500 meg, 500 kilo ohm rather. That's thinking. Okay, let's try 300. That's a little bit better. 200. And finally 100. One mega ohm, two mega ohm, three, four, five, and finally six mega ohm. Ah, just over the threshold, I'm assuming. Yeah. So, eh, oh well. Um, it's okay. Definitely slow in some of those ranges, though. And go. no luck with that really low resolution 0.5 of an ohm. No can do. Well, we haven't done this test in a while. The high voltage test, DC volts. Let's give it a whirl. Master Fui, are you ready? Starting off with 250 volts DC. Three, two, one. And no worries there. All right, we're gonna increase that now. 500 volts. Three, two, one. Master Fui, oh yeah, 500. Finally, let's max it out. Now, 1,000 volts, that is definitely over the 600 voltage rating. Oh man, here we go. Three, two, one. Wow. So, mm, there you go. Nothing blue, but uh, wow, 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 wow. Seem to, seem to survive, seem to survive. Good job. Give you a quick idea of the size. Yeah, it's pretty, um, you know, mid size. Um, smaller than the habit test, bigger than the 830. So it's a good size, just not a large one. From the wall, 120 volts. It's still only showing us a low sensitivity rating. So, nah, eh. oh, now it's high. Go figure. Now it's high. It's a little funky, eh? Hmm. Early. I mean, it gives us one beep, but. 
a little bit better when it comes to that cord, but still, eh, eh, so-so. Already teardown time, starting off with the reverse side, and no shielding, no surprise. Kind of a cheapy, cheesy ABS plastic going on here. Um, oh, but what is interesting is look at that. That is the three volt power connector that connects to the uh, PCB. It goes just like so. So a little bit better than, you know, maybe your standard spring or prong. So eh, not a bad touch, I guess. And there we are with a closer look at that uh, PCB. A little bit interesting, isn't it? Let's start off at the bottom with those split input jacks. Yeah, we see them all the time in the cheapo zone. Eh, they're okay. Um, moving up the line, we have two ceramic style fuses. Uh, we have a 10 amp on the high current side, and that is a 600 milliamp on the uh, low current side. Seems to be sitting a little funny, that one fuse here. And... Oh yeah, so what they've done... <laughs> okay, it's a cheapo, let's not forget. What they've done is they put on the fuse holder the wrong way. You see how we have those little captive clasps? That should actually be on this side to keep the fuse from falling out. So that's why it's looking a little funky cold Medina there. Anywho, moving up here, look at that nice big B diode. A um, couple of PTCs on the voltage side. And yeah, look at that, they couldn't afford the package. We got our standard blob. Now remember, this is just a cheapo, so let's not get overexcited. Um, here we have a uh, headers for factory calibration. And holy cannoli, look at that. That's why we have this funky NCV. So what they've done, what they've done is they've just real old school here, given us a piece of wire and soldered it to the header of the main board and that, my dear friends, is 2022 non-contact voltage detection. Oh yeah. Almost missed it, excuse me, but uh, there, instead of a current shunt, we've got one of those uh, cur current limiting uh, SMD resistors, an R005, that's a 0.005 ohm resistor. So there's our shunt, folks. Hmm, let's flip it over. And oh my god, it's a crop circle. No, it's actually a rotary selector track that is not greased, it's greaseless. So, oh, look at the looky, looky. Um, yeah, no other uh, forms of input protection on this side. Sometimes they're hiding on the opposite side, but not the case here. Um, here we can see decent cedar, solder blobs, at least, for those jack inputs. Uh, yeah, so not much else on that side of the board. Here, of course, we have the ball and spring mechanism. Rotary selector has the springs and the balls, as you can see, kind of. So it's old school, but you know, I kind of prefer it actually. Of course, we have our uh, zebra strip for the display and the soft touch buttons over here. So yeah, not much else going on. Let's put it back together, come back with my clothes by. Yeah, it is cheap, I will grant you that. Um, 10 bucks US from amazon.com. Uh, yeah, so it's definitely in the affordable department, but, and there's a big but, it just didn't perform that great, didn't perform that good at all. Really didn't do anything special when it comes to LED dials. Yeah, it was not so good at all, but it is 6,000 counts, and I mean, it does have, you know, a pretty good feature set all around, but those test leads, the default test leads, for whatever reason, were complete crap and continuity. So if you do get this cheapy, make sure you upgrade those leads. Price, and they're even giving you a freaking case, which sometimes goes for like five, 10 bucks on its own. Suffice to say, at the end of the day, it's a meter that I can recommend, but with some hesitations. It's not gonna do everything, and it sure as hell can't do everything that great, but it does do more than those standard 830 clones that are so prevalent on the market today. Master Fui, FY8233E gets a solid three out of five stars. Yeah, not so bad for a $10 so meter. You can certainly do a lot worse. Hey, thanks for watching this review, everybody. We've got lots more coming. We've got soldering stations up the yang. I'm telling you, it's gonna be like soldering craziness on the channel. And I've got power supplies and of course, tons more multimeters. Hey, thanks for watching. Till the next one, keep on testing. Top of the meter, we have our black 2.4 volts output voltage. Quick look at resistance now, only a six mig. Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's no business like the multimeter business, the only business I know.
I just can't put that in the video. I just can't.